Hi guys, do you want to see something cute? Open your eyes. He's almost 15, cute little old man. Anyway, this video is brought to you by the inspiration, my buddy Dale. Dale is a hardcore determinist and we've been in discussions for a long time. Dale responded to my last video titled God Made Ears That Hear with this. Who makes ears that cannot hear and eyes that cannot see? Question mark. And then he copy and pasted words from God's book for me to see. And it's from Exodus 4, starting in verse 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither recently nor in times past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. For I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. But the Lord said to him, Who has made the human mouth? Or who makes anyone unable to speak or deaf or able to see or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now then, go, and I myself will be with your mouth and instruct you in what to say. And what I gather is that in Dale's mind, he sees that God makes someone unable to speak or unable to see or unable to hear. And Dale, I agree. And if you let yourself see it, you will see the most beautiful meaning of those verses. Because here's what I see as opposed to what he sees. I see that Moses has very low self-esteem and that he's never been one to speak boldly. And so he's questioning, why would God choose him out of all people, especially between him and Aaron? Why would God choose Moses? Moses, who does not speak eloquently, and Aaron, who does. Between the two, which do you think will have the greater impact on the people? Will it be the one who comes to them who already speaks eloquently all on his own? Or would it be the man who never spoke eloquently, who suddenly speaks eloquently with God? I'd say God chose the right man because if Moses didn't speak eloquently before and suddenly he speaks eloquently, that just might catch their attention. And then Dale again sends me the same question. Who makes ears that cannot hear? and eyes that cannot see. Who? Hint. Who has made the human mouth? Or who makes anyone unable to speak or deaf or able to see or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? My response to that is simple. Those are physical infirmities. He made all mouths, the ones that speak and the ones that do not speak. He made all ears, the ones that hear and the ones that do not hear. He made all eyes, the one that see and the ones that do not see. So if he made Moses' mouth, the one that does not speak eloquently, do you think he might have the power to make it speak eloquently? 
The answer to that is a renowned yes. So what God is saying to Moses is, I made the mouth. Let me do all the talking. And together, we can make Pharaoh set the people free. You can't do it on your own. But with me, all things are possible. And then I can start to tell within the back and forth, he's getting very frustrated with me. He literally resorted to this. Free will is an illusion. You do know what an illusion is, right? Just in case, it's something that appears to be real, but isn't. And then I said, wow, you gave me the definition of illusion, which made me able to understand what an illusion is. Now that I know what an illusion is, why should I believe you when you feed me the idea that free will is an illusion? And his response, believe me? Oh no, I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm just telling you how I see it. What you believe is between you and God. Now remember that he's telling me that what I believe is between me and God. And here's my response that I delivered to him. What I believe is between my ears and in my heart. And it got there through careful consideration of the wisdom of God that was delivered to me. God gave me all I needed to believe what I believe. He gave it to everyone because he is rich in mercy. What's between me and God is Christ Jesus because he put him between us. He put him between him and everyone, which means that to get to the Father whom we have heard and learned about, we must simply come to him through the Son whom he ordained and put between him and us. So actually come to think about it. You're absolutely right. What I believe is between me and God. That is Christ Jesus. He put him there. And by him, whom I now believe, I know the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, his profound response to that was okie dokie. Okay, now that okie dokie response triggered me in a good way. And if you haven't been really listening up until this point, please listen, please. Because this is all coming from a man whom I adore. He is under the delusion that God wrote everything, everything. He wrote all the thoughts that I'm having right now he wrote them okay which gosh i mean literally it makes my mind oh because if he wrote everything that means everything is god's word everything so 
everything I say is God's word, even if it is in opposition of something somebody else says, which would also be God's word, and it makes my mind want to explode. So, we're getting close to the end here. I want you to listen. So my response was this. God didn't write okie dokie in your thoughts for you to write. Okie dokie is the only response you were willing to write in your war on behalf of a delusion called determinism. And your war has become determinism versus free will. You are warring hard for determinism. Okay. Your war should be on behalf of Christ Jesus to persuade men to accept the truth, which is the faith of Christ Jesus to access into the grace of God. You have been sidetracked by the devil to war against free will. He's a snake and he is willing to do anything to get our minds off Christ Jesus so that we don't use our God-given free time walking in wisdom towards them outside of Christ Jesus to present them to the Father in Christ Jesus through wisdom that he equipped you with when you came to him through wisdom that was delivered to you. In your free time, you ought to be serving God. Colossians 4, 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. 2 Corinthians 6. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he has saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time accepted. Now, listen. To receive the grace of God in vain is to receive it and keep it to yourself because that would make you a useless member of the body of Christ that will not dispense it. And maybe they will not dispense it because they accepted the idea that God works alone without his body. So if you could please just imagine that we who are in the body of Christ are Pez dispensers. And our one job is to dispense grace. And the definition for dispense is distribute or provide a service or information to a number of people. I wonder how many people that God wants us to dispense his grace to. Titus 2.11 For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. All of them. Okay, so I hope you're still listening. I hope. Listen. The time that we are in right now is the dispensation of grace. A dispensation is not 
a time. It is a dispensation of something. And we're in the time of the dispensation of grace. And we, the Pez dispensers, are dispensing grace to vessels made of clay, able to receive the thing that was dispensed to it. This vessel is able to receive it, but is it willing to receive it? So we were Pez dispensers, you know, just kind of like everything was sugar-coated. Now we're grace dispensers. And we became a grace dispenser when we obeyed the gospel. And to obey the gospel is that when it was dispensed to you, you received it. That is obeying the gospel. And by it, being in Stacy, this vessel, that granted her access into the grace of God. So the gospel reveals the faith of Christ, right? Like his faith. He died on the cross. He was buried and he raised again. And when we accept the faith of Christ in our vessel, by the faith of Christ in us, we are granted access into the grace of God wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. And then once we're in there, standing there, rejoicing in the hope of glory, we are then instructed to walk in wisdom towards those without. Because if you do not do that, that means that you received the grace of God in vain. And you will not receive any rewards. So again, the gospel reveals the faith of Christ Jesus and it's the gift of God to be freely received so that no man may boast before God presenting him with their own faith. So it's by the faith of Christ that we receive as a gift that we are granted access into the grace of God. Anyone without the faith of Christ, or I can phrase it as anyone outside of the faith of Christ, will not be granted access into the grace of God because he doesn't owe anyone entrance into his grace. But because he is rich in mercy, he dispensed it freely as a gift to be received as such. But what he will do is give rewards to those that received his gift that won't keep it to themselves, but do his will and dispense it. Are you with me? Those that received the gift and then go out into the world and dispense it will receive rewards. Salvation is a gift, but works of faithfulness will be rewarded. Our works are not for salvation and not even for rewards. Our works are for the salvation of them that are without it, so they are able to receive it 
because we are God's servants that work together with him during the dispensation of grace. And this is made known unto us so that we are not ignorant as to how God works to get his work accomplished. The phrase, God works in mysterious ways, is a lie. And please do not accept that lie into your vessel. Right now is the time to purge and get to work. Please and thank you. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. I hope you're blessed.